know, it's it's kind of like the all-star game of baseball for park builders. It's like the final four. You really want to like showcase, you know, what you put your passion and heart into. It's what every builder aspires to go build at. It's the best shapers and park builders in the world get together and build anything they want within a two-week span with some of the best equipment. And, and then you get to watch some of the best riders in the world ride it. Park builders are, you know, they've often been called the unsung heroes of snowboard park. Once the crowds leave and the glory fades, they hop in the cat and they often spend hundreds of hours building stuff. We first built a Super Park in 99. There wasn't a lot of experience in actually building jumps in parks. Like if you look at photos of the Berserker, it's just like a massive mound of snow with just a groomed lip. I just couldn't believe, couldn't believe the size of the jump. And, and one of the days I got in the cat with Josh and we worked on the, on the takeoff because I mean, the takeoff was, was way too quick at the time. Kurt's Berserker was definitely the biggest memory that I have. It defined me as a park builder and put us all on the map and it was a big moment. I mean I had no idea where it was going to go. No idea that it was going to grow to what it is today. I like to think of it as an art form. It starts out on a cocktail napkin and works its way to Google SketchUp. All of the work that we do all season is kind of building up to this, right? Super Park at the end of the season where they can showcase all the design concepts that we've all had, and it's the, it's the highlight. When you're working at a resort all winter, there's usually a lot of very defined structure and rules. As a builder, when, if you get a chance to go to Super Park, it's like the gloves come off. The sky's the limit. There's no rules. work around the clock. Just the guys moving snow all night, all day, all night, all day. Other challenges is, is the terrain. You get halfway done with the feature and you realize you run out of snow. Weather, lack of sleep. So you don't know how deep it is, where rocks are, where stumps are, where trees are. You know, a lot of times one of the limits we find is the equipment and the tools. You couldn't see out of the snow cats originally. The blades wouldn't go high enough to get stuff steep. The tillers when you drop them down, the combs would get caught underneath, so you know your grimming finish was terrible. And now, you know, through building the park bully, we solved all those problems, and that made a huge difference in what was possible. In today's world, you know, the, the equipment's great, the, the snow cats are great, but you still have to get out and use a shovel and use tape measures and transits and levels and... It sounds like, oh, you've got eight or nine days to build, but by the time you get to day seven or eight, you're sweating bullets. You're like, am I going to finish? Am I going to finish? No matter what we had for tools or snow or time available, just everyone's mentality at Super Park is to keep pushing the limits. I think all the challenges are self-imposed, like how much can we possibly do in these few hours and these few days. For me, that's what I love about Super Park is just how it's evolved into pushing us as builders. And in turn, what we don't even realize is happening is we're changing the way people take off a jump and leave a jump and their grabs and their style because they got to adapt to some strange takeoffs.
think the riders come and it kind of opens their mind of, wait, I've got this cool trick on a quarter pipe, but now I gotta take it to a hip landing. You get new techniques, new riding styles. I don't think I've ever been to a setup like this where you have so much opportunity, and that's definitely motivating. You know, I'm 44 years old, man. I learned two tricks last week because those features were put in front of me. You can build whatever you want, and however you think people are gonna ride it, someone is gonna find a way to break those rules and push those boundaries. There's so many features in the canon of Super Park that have been brought to resorts around the world, like a smaller step over or a sea box or a up flat down, you know, all these things that premiered at Super Park. Because builders, you know, they're looking at the Super Park issue and they're watching the daily edits and their brains start turning. When all of the resorts we work with and all of the public sees these creative features, that's what they demand at the resorts. So then we're able to build what we want to build. And that's going to push us all forward. There's been so many creative features built at Super Park. And, you know, I, I remember thinking when Seven Springs did their first hip with the channel in it. As a builder, I was like, mm, why didn't I think of that? Eric Rosenwald built the four-sided quarter pipe. Like, as soon as I saw it, I was like, oh, it's such a good idea. I really gotta say, the artwork that Joel Rarco has brought to it, just really cool, chiseled, manicured features. The plaza build at Mount Hood, where they had, you know, that rail set up, to see, like, the builders pull off something that resembled the city was really cool. Going up the chairlift the first run, I think I saw all of those things that I've really liked over the years all wrapped up into everything I saw in front of me. The feature that Matt Malilli built this year it doesn't even look real looking at it down the hill. It just looks beautiful. Oh man, it's so hard to say where the future of Super Park is going, and I think that's the best part about it. I keep telling myself there's only so much you can build, but then every year it blows me away what happens. I don't think that's an answerable question. <laughs> I think the creativity factor will never go away, and that's where I see Super Park going. I hope to see it progressing towards things that we skateboard and stuff. What do we do? Is snowboarding dying? Why? And you look at all those ways. Well, get back to the funnest stuff in the world, you know? Thank <laughs> you.